Jasper Jones is an incredible Australian novel that encompasses themes of racism, secrets, the plight of outsiders, fear, and courage. The young adult fiction novel is a murder mystery intertwined with a coming of age story, and it embraces the elements of an Australian Gothic tale. Set in rural 1960s Australia, Jasper Jones acts as a mirror for Australian culture, highlighting an undercurrent of racism towards First Nations people and immigrants alike. The story is altogether heartfelt, funny, heartbreaking, and a genuine page turner, full of great dialogue and unforgettable characters. Hello and welcome to my video looking at Craig Sylvie's novel, Jasper Jones. In this video, I'll only be covering the plot summary of the novel. I'll make a part two for this video where I'll discuss the themes of the novel, relevance of the text, author context, and the symbolism that's used in Jasper Jones. But for now, I'll get on with the overview of the novel in this video. Plot summary. Jasper Jones is set in rural 1960s Australia in the fictional town of Corrigan, Western Australia, and told through the eyes of Charlie Buckton. Late on a sweltering summer night, Charlie's life is changed forever when the town outcast, Jasper Jones, knocks on his window, asking for help. Charlie is a bright, book-loving 13-year-old boy who does well in school and stays out of trouble. Jasper Jones, on the other hand, has a reputation among the townspeople as a troublemaker. Many parents in Corrigan blame Jasper for leading their children astray. Whether it's theft or arson or something more nefarious, the townspeople are certain that Jasper has had a hand in it, even with a complete absence of any evidence. Jasper leads Charlie past the river to a clearing in the bush where Jasper lives and sleeps. Jasper shows Charlie that he's discovered the dead body of a young girl in his clearing, hanging from a rope. The girl is Laura Wishart, one of Jasper's girlfriends, and Jasper explains that he found her body earlier that night and he's come to find Charlie for help because he's wise, trustworthy and loyal. Charlie is horrified by the body and tells Jasper that they must alert the police. Jasper insists that if they tell the police, due to the prejudice of the townspeople, he will be arrested for the crime and sent to jail. Jasper convinces Charlie that their only option is to throw Laura's body into the nearby creek in order to stall the forthcoming police investigation and allow Jasper and Charlie time to find the real killer. This is the only way to clear Jasper's name, and so the pair do exactly that. Jasper suggests that the real killer is Mad Jack Lionel, a reclusive old man, infamous in Corrigan, who has supposedly killed a young girl before. Charlie spends the following morning with his parents, his dad, who he greatly admires, and his mum, who he dislikes, because he finds her controlling and petty. The horrifying scene from the previous night is burnt into Charlie's mind, and his parents begin noticing changes in his behaviour. Charlie then spends the morning with his best friend, Jeffrey Liu, who is an intelligent and humorous Vietnamese boy. Jeffrey is also a gifted cricket player, but the older boys refuse to let him play on the local cricket team, again due to racial prejudice. The Vietnam War is currently happening, and the locals have sent a number of young soldiers off to fight. Jeffrey and his family face persistent racism from the townspeople as a result. Charlie also happens to have a crush on the younger sister of the dead girl, Eliza Wishart, and during his time spent with Jeffrey, the pair often run into Eliza. Charlie is conflicted about not sharing his knowledge of Laura's body with Eliza, but remembers his promise of loyalty to Jasper and therefore remains silent. Charlie begins researching other nearby murders at the local library, trying to understand the motive and rationale of killers. Many of the cases he studies illustrate instances of domestic abuse, with deaths often occurring at the hands of immediate family members. When Charlie returns home, his mother is furious with him because he failed to tell his parents he was going to the library. The news of Laura Wishart's disappearance has spread around town and parents are rightfully worried about their children. Charlie backchats his mother due to the perceived overreaction and Charlie's mum punishes him by making him dig a huge hole in the backyard. Charlie sees this punishment as cruel and despises his mother for it. That night, he sneaks out and meets Jasper again in the glade by the river. Jasper tells Charlie that he'd been arrested and brutally beaten by the local police due to their suspicion for his connection to Laura's disappearance. He tells Charlie that he was out of town in the days leading up to Laura's death and that he plans to sneak into Mad Jack Lionel's property to find evidence that he is the one that killed Laura. Before they leave the glade, Charlie discovers that someone has scratched the word sorry into the tree that Laura was hung from. Two weeks later, Charlie witnesses Jeffrey's great sporting triumph as he gets subbed in for a sick player. Jeffrey wins the game for the local cricket team, which earns him begrudging respect from the older boys and the townspeople more broadly. Charlie also kisses Eliza on the sideline during the match. 
Later in the story, New Year's Eve is approaching and Charlie is planning to spend time with Eliza, watching the local fireworks show. Eliza had hinted she had something she needed to share with Charlie. But before they can meet up, Charlie is met by Jasper, who insists that he needs to follow him to Mad Jack Lionel's property immediately. He says that he's found the word sorry engraved on an old rusted car there. Jasper plans to confront Jack and force him to confess to Laura's murder. At Mad Jack's house, Charlie is surprised to find that Jack is a polite, lonely old man who isn't the least bit hostile to either of them. Jasper angrily tells Mad Jack that he knows he killed her. Jack confesses and begins to cry, but as he details the story, Jasper becomes confused. Mad Jack was in fact Jasper's estranged grandfather, and the young woman he supposedly killed all those years ago was in fact Jasper's mother, Rosie. She had died in a car crash while Jack was driving, and Jasper's father had never forgiven him. On the way home, Charlie runs into Eliza, who tells him she has crucial information about her sister. On their walk out of town, Charlie discovers his mother having an affair in the back seat of a car. The two of them have a heated argument before Charlie continues following Eliza, who leads him to Jasper's secret glade. Eliza explains to Charlie that she had followed Laura the night she died, out to this very spot. She watched on as Laura had tied a rope to the tree and took her own life. Eliza shows Charlie the suicide note that she had taken from Laura's body that night as proof of her story. The note explains that Laura's father, the well-respected Pete Wishart, had raped and abused her for years. On the day she had taken her own life, she had discovered she was pregnant with her dad's child. She tried to tell her mother, but she wouldn't believe her. Eliza admits she carved sorry into the tree out of her own guilt for passively watching her sister's death. Charlie is traumatized by Eliza's story and admits that he helped Jasper move Laura's body into the river. Eliza is pained by this information, but forgives Charlie. Jasper arrives at the glade and demands to know why Eliza is there. Eliza shows Jasper the suicide note and Jasper becomes incredibly distraught, trying to drown himself in the river. After Charlie stops Jasper, Eliza suggests telling the police about her father and his crimes. The boys reject this idea, again citing the town's prejudice against Jasper and the three of them decide to keep the nature of Laura's death a secret. At the end of the novel, after Charlie's daring feat of bravery to impress the local kids, Everyone is shocked to see a plume of smoke in the distance. Charlie runs towards the smoke, only to discover that Eliza's house is on fire. Charlie realises that it was Eliza who had burned her own house, not fully understanding her motives. He knows that Jasper will be blamed for this act of arson, but is confident that Jasper is too smart for the local police to ever catch him. The story ends with Charlie walking towards Eliza, confident he'll say the right thing. Jasper Jones is an incredible Australian novel with a number of rich and complex characters. The murder mystery element mixed with the coming of age story makes for a real page turner that had me thoroughly engaged. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Don't forget to check out part two of this video when I release that. I hope that this video has been helpful and educational in some way for you. And if you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below. If there are any other books or plot summaries you'd like me to cover on this channel, please let me know.